I've put together a list of the top 10 ways that you can be light in light of the earthquake. Here we go, number 10. This is an old person. Old people can be a bit scary with their funny smell and hairy chins, but actually old people are great. Sadly, lots of old people were isolated during the earthquake when all they needed was someone to come and chat with them. Why not find a solo oldie in your area and befriend them and fight the loneliness epidemic? Number nine, we just had a 7.1 earthquake and no one died. This is Haiti. They had a 7.1 earthquake earlier this year and at least 250,000 people died. There is a reason for that. It's because we in some part keep them dirt poor. So why not see where the world's fault lines are and support one another and support another part of the world that is earthquake prone but that hasn't the infrastructure New Zealand has? Even buying fair trade is a good start. Number eight. Some friends of mine have had their homes condemned and weren't allowed to even grab a sweatshirt from inside before the bulldozers came in. Insurance claims may take months, so what better time to give that wardrobe, or if you like Spanky and I, that pile of clothes on the floor, a review. And if you haven't worn it in the last year, put it in the Gibby's bag. Number seven. This is St John's Hororata, after the quake. There are quite a few Anglican churches who have been hit hard by the earthquake that don't have many young people to help out. Why not assist another part of the communion and see if they could use some fresh young hands? Imagine the light that you would have beaming out of your fresh young skin as a group of people with naturally coloured hair and youthful non-arthritic spines turned up to lend a hand to the oldies. Number six, be brave. Openly offer to pray with or for a non-Christian friend who's feeling upset or anxious about the quake. Believe it or not, but most people won't turn you down. You don't have to pray out loud if you think that will freak them out too much, and it's a great way to be more open about your faith. Number five. This is the new emergency response team set up by Bishop Victoria in the pink over there. Why not set up an emergency response team for future emergencies, be them natural disasters or social emergencies? Get a tent or a van, capes and headlamps, and have a team who can set up anywhere to help out, talk, or pray with people on location when things happen again. You could also make up a secret handshake. Number four. Around 500 homes have been condemned in Christchurch like this one. We probably all know someone who's now homeless. Jeff, down the back, had his place condemned, and Tim had his recording studio orange-stickered, and so he lost his business space. Invite someone whose house or business has been condemned over to dinner, and show them a bit of light and hope. If you're really brave, you could invite someone who was homeless before the quake even hit. Number three. Amazingly, no one died in our earthquake. Who knows why? but it should remind us to be continually grateful for, to God for what he gives us. Why not use the earthquake as a kickstart towards thanking God for what you have more regularly? A good place to start is by committing to meaningful grace and thanksgiving before dinner. Even do it when you have guests and they look at you funny. Number two. Christchurch has lots of small businesses that barely survived week to week pre-quake with the recession and corporate chains already hurting them. Now many of them have been damaged and find themselves teetering on the edge of survival. Figure out what you're purchasing each week and how you could support a local business in your daily shop. And number one, many of you have already been getting practical, getting about with your spades and helping homeowners whose land is covered in liquefaction. But this earthquake has presented us all with an opportunity to keep this community connection up. Get a crew together, go door knocking and see who needs, needs help in your area. Then draw up a map of who, where and what and start to make it happen. Keeping connected long term with the needs of your community is an amazing way to shine Christ's light.